Hey YouTube, Natalie here and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. Today's video is all about 21 fun facts about me. Now if you've been here a while, you know that I absolutely love tea and coffee and I might be what they call a coffee snob. I am a coffee snob. And perhaps that's fact number one about me. <laughs> uh, but I thought what better way to start our video off than the way I normally do, which is with making a cup of tea and then we'll head out into the garden. So this mug is very special to me because it was gifted to me by my friends, Jess of Roots and Refuge and Jill of Whispering Willow Farm, which is why many of you are here. And I just wanna say, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. I hope you enjoy this video where we can get to know each other just a little bit better. So, something you may or may not know already about me is that I am 28 weeks pregnant with our first child which is why Jess and Jill came to visit. And if you haven't seen those videos, feel free to click the links up above. 28 weeks pregnant and feeling good and we're having a baby girl. And I'll also link those videos if you wanna see any of those videos and follow along as our family grows. But it's been so amazing and it's been one of our greatest dreams come true to start our family. Hence the Mama Bee shirt. I was actually at Lowe's today picking up some supplies for nursery makeover. <laughs> this guy goes, hey mama. And I was like, Hey, Kevin. <laughs> I mean, it was fine. Like, I guess it comes with the territory of wearing like this mama bee shirt, but it just caught me so off guard. I was like, hello. <laughs> Having our first child has been one of our greatest dreams come true. But a large part of why we are learning to farm in our backyard is because we have this super God-sized dream to own and operate a regenerative farm and retreat center for the purpose of equipping and refreshing and launching leaders back into the community. We believe in making the most of where you are and building upon skills along the road to achieving your dreams. And that's why we do what we do here between the garden and the greenhouse and all of the building that I do, the worm farming, which I'll talk with you guys more about in a little bit. All of this adds up to knowledge to equip us, something that we chip away at every single day, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. So I'm hopping over here to talk with you about our worm farm, which I'll do in just a second. But it just hit me that the day that this video is released, is the day that we will be celebrating the life of my dad who passed away seven years ago this year. We were so tight. <laughs> we were such good friends and confidants and there are days where it is still really hard, but I'll say that the journey has taught me a lot and it's taught me a lot about walking with people through grief and what it takes to grieve well and what it means to live a life that honors your dreams. That was something that my dad was so, such an advocate for in my life. He really advocated that my dreams existed for a reason and he spoke so much life over me that existed to do the work that I'm doing now. And I never knew it would look like this, but he was so right that we're gonna leave this place better than we found it. And I'm so grateful for the life that he spoke over me and the time that we had together and uh, for those of you who have lost a parent, you know what it's like. It kind of feels like you're suddenly like a half orphan. It's just such a strange thing to lose a parent. So anyway, this year it doesn't seem to sting as bad as it has in years past. And maybe that's because partially we're looking so forward to the birth of our baby girl. But um, anyway, kind of interesting timing. This video is coming, coming out on the day of his uh, his passing and going to be with Jesus. So anyway, let's talk about the worm farm. Okay, my worm farm. Worms, YouTube, YouTube worms. Now that we're all acquainted, let me tell you another fun fact about me, which is that I am a worm farmer. That is the title of my little book that I've written about worm farming. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely check the links down below. I've also got a free quick start guide. So if you're wanting to just hop right into using worms, that might be a good way to get started. Uh, but yeah, worms. If you're thinking about getting into composting, watch some of my worm videos, do your research, check it out. I cannot recommend worms enough. Yeah, that's another fun fact about me. I'm a worm farmer. <laughs> I'm losing track of the numbers. I think this is fun fact number seven, I hope. 
Uh, but fun fact number seven for you is that I have built everything here. I have built everything that you see here. Like literally, the garden beds, the worm farm, like I built that. And I'm gonna show you how I built it next week. Uh, the greenhouse right here, some of you guys have heard about this greenhouse. I built this greenhouse with my own two hands. And part of that is simply because I love doing it. Now you may see my husband around from time to time. His name is Tommy. I should tell you guys how we, get, how we met after this. Yeah, I'll tell you guys that story next. But part of the thing for us is that he has worked really long hours full time since we've been married. Since I work more flexible hours and I can determine my schedule as a counselor, I have more time on my hands or more flexible time on my hands to build things. It's not only something that I love, but my schedule allows for it. And I think it's been a really neat experience because then I'm showing other people who have either back injuries like me, who are maybe single, or living on their own, like if I can do it, you can do it. I started this journey of building garden beds and building things for the homestead with really no knowledge at all. And so I like to tell people all the time, I'm like, hey, listen, if I can do it, you can do it. And uh, so that's another fun fact about me and the things that you see on our homestead. Okay, this is getting really fun. I'm gonna tell you the story of how Tommy and I met. <laughs> Time for the next fun fact, which is how Tommy and I met. And I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but it's true and we laugh about it. Tommy and I met in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> we met at our local saloon in line dancing bar, which out here in California is very rare. Like that is not a typical thing. There are like three main line dancing bars in Southern California total. And so the fact that we met at a bar, that it was like a saloon and the local line dancing place, it just makes us laugh. And Tommy says, we have to tell our kids we met up in the club. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm gonna tell them the wholesome story, which is that we were line dancing with all of our friends. And the story is pretty simple, is that all of our friends went to school together, but Tommy and I were like the public school kids, so we never met. And so all of our friends were at the ranch that night and they're like, oh my gosh, it's been so long, it's so good to see you. And I make some comment of like, oh, you know, I really want a two-step, but I know I'm really tall, like I get it, it's okay, cause the guys there, you know, aren't willing to dance with taller girls, which I totally get. And out of the blackness of the bar, I just see this hand come out <laughs> underneath the light. And he goes, hello, I'm Tommy. Apparently we haven't met yet. Would you like to dance? And I was like, apparently we haven't met yet. Who, do you own this place? <laughs> so yeah, we met up in the club at the saloon and it was love at first sight. I mean, I was totally swept away, but I was on a no dating vow story for another time. So we were just friends for a long time. That was really good for us. Highly recommend it. And yeah, just we've been together ever since. And that is the story of how Tommy and I met. Fun fact for you. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, I just got so excited because guess what? So some of you guys saw the videos that Jess, Jill, and I did of planting the garden out here. And guys, the garden is sprouting and I'm so excited. <laughs> I guess the fun fact here about me is that even after a couple years of gardening, I just still am so impatient and check every day to see if little seeds are sprouting in my garden. I don't know, it's a bad habit, but I just, I get so excited about little seeds sprouting up. I totally forgot to tell you guys why I picked the number 21. So a quick fun fact about me is that my birthday is November 21st. And so I thought we would try to make it to 21. Fun facts about me, but honestly, I'm running out. I wonder what else we should talk about. I better check my little Instagram poll and see what it is that you guys wanna know more about. Let's get into some questions that you guys wanna know more about. So I asked you guys on Instagram, if we don't hang out there already, please feel free to follow me over there so we can hang out together every single day. You guys wanna know some things. So let's see what you guys wanna know. So Jess asks, are you native to San Diego? No, I am not native to San Diego. Both Tommy and I are from up north, Orange County, California. We were born and raised there. And we only moved to San Diego because last year it was very clear that Tommy was supposed to take a job out here. It was a huge leap of faith, uh, but we're here making the most of it. When did you plant your first garden? That is a great question. I think technically my first garden was when I started this YouTube channel. You can go back and watch Baby Natalie, Vintage Hey It's a Good Life. That is when I planted my very own first garden all by myself. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew I had to get started somewhere. So I built these beds and put them on our apartment patio and started learning. Favorite edible plant that you are growing right now? Leafy greens. Leafy greens are by far my favorite thing to grow. They just taste so good. They're so different from store-bought. I love fresh kale from the garden. 
Those by far are my favorite things to grow. Hello. I got hungry, so I came inside for a snack, which brings me to another fun fact, that I love tortilla chips. They are like my guilty pleasure. I love super salty chips. With refried beans is even better. With refried beans and salsa is the ultimate. So, <laughs> cheers to that. You know, that just reminded me that Another fun fact about me is that I believe that food is medicine and what we consume is really important to our overall health. It's so important for me to cook from scratch. On that note, it is getting close to dinner time, so let's pull out some dinner supplies. Which brings me to another fun fact, which is that I absolutely love cooking in cast iron. I did not grow up cooking with cast iron. My mom was like, it's too heavy. I don't know why you like it. I absolutely love cooking in cast iron and learning old world skills. Like love my Dutch oven, which my mom actually got for me. So thank you, mom. Um, I love cooking in cast iron and just honing in on more holistic ways to cook. And for me, cast iron is part of that equation. Another fun fact for you is that this little bowling ball it's about 30 pounds heavy now, and I am feeling it. <laughs> I, I get winded pretty easily these days. <laughs> All right, while we wait for that soup to heat up, I thought we could come outside and I could share with you some fun facts that I just remembered about baby Natalie and cooking. Okay, so another fun fact for you is that I started cooking at the age of three. Now, some of you who are parents are like, really Natalie cooking? You started cooking when you were three years old? Yes. <laughs> I was a very persistent little bugger and at the ripe age of maybe even two and a half, I don't know, mom, leave a comment here and correct me, but I was very persistently asking my mom to allow me to chop carrots. And the story goes something like this. With my mom, we were chopping veggies for dinner and my dad calls. He goes, hi, sweetheart, what are you doing? And I go, chopping vegetables, <laughs> cutting carrots. <laughs> he goes, put your mother on the phone. <laughs> That's another fun fact about me is that when I'm just wired like that, like when I know what I want, I go after it. And my mom tells the story too of me being very young and giving her this look like, don't get in my way. I'm determined. <laughs> another fun fact for you about baby Natalie is my first phrase was, I can do it. I feel like we all have superpowers based on our stories and the way that we're wired. And I just came into this world determined and on this mission. And if I had a superpower, I think my superpower would be where other people see obstacles, I see opportunity. And that's just how I've been wired since I was a very young person. And that's part of what fuels this channel. It's part of what fuels my work as a counselor. It's part of what will fuel our work on the regenerative farm one day. It's not what I came out here to tell you. What I came out here to tell you was that baby Natalie, <laughs> young Natalie, was obsessed with cooking shows. Anybody else obsessed with cooking shows as a young child? Like I'm talking very young, like five, six. I would be watching a movie with my dad every Friday night like we did. And because he woke up so early for work, he would fall asleep. The minute that I heard him snoring would pull out the movie because I wasn't interested in watching it by myself. I would eject the, the VHS at that time. I would eject the VHS, switch the channel input and put on the cooking network, <laughs> the food network. And my dad, bless his heart, he would wake up to the sound of BAM! Kick it up a notch. And he would laugh and laugh and laugh. And he'd be like, you sweet young thing, you're six years old. What are you doing watching Emeril, this middle-aged Italian man, cook on TV? And I, I didn't have an answer. I was just always interested in food. And so that is a huge part of why we grow food here, is that we love food. Here's another fun fact. I have always wanted my own cooking show. And who knew that with the invention of YouTube and social media and these platforms that really you can have your own cooking show. But there are specific ways that I want to do that cooking show. And so until we can kind of hone in all of those ways, that cooking show may be on pause. But still, I think it's really cool that it's a possibility. And it gets me really excited for the future of this channel. Okay, and now I just have to admit to you guys that I have absolutely no idea what we're, what number we're on. Like none whatsoever. Totally clueless. Um, but as we've been sitting out here chatting, so many hummingbirds have come by. And another fun fact for you is that, ooh, what is that? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Don't go in my house. He's going in my house. You guys. He's trying to go in my house. That window is gonna have to stay so tightly shut. 
Okay, but I came over here to tell you guys that as we've been sitting out here, there have been so many hummingbirds flying by. And the day that my grandmother passed away, who's another person that I'm very close with, or was very close with, I remember sitting in her courtyard and just praying that there would be a sign from the other side that she made it okay. I just really wanted that assurance. And God is so faithful, totally gave me that assurance. And the minute that I asked for that sign of assurance, the sky opened, this giant sunbeam came through the courtyard and all of these hummingbirds flew through. It was just so symbolic of her because she loved hummingbirds so much. And I thought, okay, I see you. You made it on the other side just fine. Hey guys, sorry for the audio visual change here, but my camera just keeps losing battery like crazy. Uh, so I just wanted to finish this off that uh, another fun fact about us is that we are believers and that these little signs like hummingbirds and lemons and butterflies uh, all mean a lot to me. I experience them as a very tangible expression of God's infinite grace and mercy for us. And yeah, anyway, I have no idea how many fun facts we ended up with. I'm so sorry, editing Natalie. Hopefully I haven't talked your ears off, you guys. Um, but hopefully you guys know me a little bit better and yeah, I'd love to know a little bit more about you. So feel free to drop a comment down in the comment box down below and share with us something that we don't know about you. Thanks so much for joining me today, you guys. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you guys on Monday with more videos from the homestead. Bye.